If you're a coach or a parent and you're wondering what you can do to help your athletes mentally perform, then you are in the right place. Today, we're going to get better. Hey, welcome to the channel. If you're new here and you're an athlete, a parent, or a coach, and you're looking for mental performance tools, tactics, and advice, then start right now by hitting that subscribe button and that notification bell below. Speaking of the ability to mentally perform, I also have a free gift for you today for stopping by the channel. I want you to go to trainwithperk.com slash free guide. What you're gonna find there is a 100% free guide that's absolutely gonna help either you if you're an athlete or if you're a parent or a coach, one of your athletes elevate their mental performance before their next big moment. Again, that's trainwithperk.com slash free guide. All right, coaches and parents, I'm gonna give you five themes that you can focus on with your athletes. Now, this is gonna be a little bit of a longer episode because we have a lot to cover here. So if you need to pause the video and grab yourself a cup of coffee, go ahead and do so now. All right, so the first theme is controllables versus the uncontrollables. And this is a massive, incredibly common hole in athletes' mindsets, especially young athletes' mindsets, in that they tend to allow a lot of things that are outside of their control to have a big negative impact on them. The biggest thing that's outside of their control that they allow to control them is the results that they get. Now, this is an incredibly common thing that I see perpetuated by parents and coaches in that we think that we can control the results that we get and we expect that of our athletes. Let's be very clear, we have no control over the results that we get. Now that's gonna really you know, raise some eyebrows here, so let me explain. Many of these young athletes think that they are this grand puppet masters over their sport, over their life, as if you know when they're going up against an opponent or another team, that they have control over what that opponent does, how that opponent plays the game, what the ref does, the decisions that the coaching, that the coaches make, how the weather is, all these things contribute to the results that they get. And here's the biggest thing. Here's the biggest thing that I always say to many athletes. If you can control the results that you get, if you have 100% control over the results that you get, why would you ever get a bad result? And so this is a huge lesson that we need to instill into these young athletes. They don't have control over the results that they get, but they do have control over their ability to place themselves mentally and physically in the best possible position to succeed. And those are the things that we need to be able to reinforce. Things such as attitude, effort, the kind of focus that you're bringing into your sport on that day. These are the things, and you can make a whole list of them with your athlete, that are in their control. And you can tell that they're in their control because they're often repeatable. Effort is repeatable. Attitude is repeatable. The ability to, to refocus and direct your focus on the task at hand is a repeatable process. And so these are the things that parents and coaches need to be working with their athletes on. They have no control over the refs, the weather, travel, the decisions that their coaches make, the opponents, or even their own teammates. They have very little control. They have actually no control over those things. And any time that we allow something that's outside of our control or that we try to exert control over something that's outside of our control, we allow that thing to then control us. So this needs to be stopped early and often. When we see athletes complaining about their teammates or the weather or the decision that the ref made, we need to catch this and we need to hold them accountable and we need to remind them that their focus needs to be on what is in their control. What are these repeatable processes that they need to invest in that's going to consistently put their mind and their body in the best possible place to succeed? All right, the second theme is I want you to think about helping them, the athletes, set their own standards for either themselves, if they're in an individual sport, or if you have a team, help them set their own standards. And I bring this up because a very common thing that I see with coaches is the very first conversation that many coaches will have with their team, especially their, their younger athletic teams and the parents is some sort of code of conduct speech. And listen, it's obviously incredibly important to establish standards and codes of conducts and rules and regulations and what the expectation is of these athletes for the season. 
But what if, instead of rambling on and on about rules and regulations at them, there was a way to help set the standards with the athletes using their own words. This is one of the most powerful exercises that I do, and I do it with almost every single team that we start out with every single year. And it's become a crowd favorite, and it's become a favorite of coaches. If you want me to do a video of the entire exercise, comment below just with, you know, launch my season or how to start a season. But that's effectively what we're doing. The simplest way to describe the exercise is build out the season in terms of key checkpoints as if you're running a race what are the key checkpoints so maybe you have the the pre-season then the first couple months of the season then may, there might be a, a break in the middle then we might have the the postseason push and then the postseason establish spe very specific checkpoints for your athletes and then within each of those checkpoints have the athletes set goals so for example in the preseason. What are four or five goals that we need to be to have developed and have handled as a team? Do that same thing, four or five goals for all of those checkpoints. Now, this is the key. Once you have those goals established, what I want you thinking about with your athletes and want you, what I want you to ask them is, how do we need to operate as a team? What standard does this team need to hold itself to or set of standards does this team need to hold itself to that's going to really help us move towards all these goals? And just ask them. And I think you're going to be really surprised by what you hear. Because what do most coaches talk at their athletes about? Right? Building a strong team, respecting each other, being encouraging, all these things. Don't you think the athletes probably already know that? Well, when you ask them, when you ask them what standards or what's going to be the code of conduct for this team or however you want to phrase it, that's going to make sense. When you ask them, that's exactly what they're going to say. They're going to say it's important to respect each other. They're going to say it's important to communicate that we develop strong leaders, that we hold ourselves accountable when things when things don't go our way or when people when people need to be held accountable they're going to come up with these things. It's an incredibly powerful process. And now, instead of you talking at them using your words, you're simply using the athlete's words. You're gonna write all these things down, print it out, hang it up somewhere. And here's the thing, when it comes time for you to hold this team accountable, you're not telling them, hey, this is what I told you to do and you didn't do it. Instead, you're saying, this is what you all decided that you needed to be held accountable to. And now it's just my job to do that. Incredibly powerful process. Comment below with some of the standards that your team comes up with. I'm looking forward to hearing it. All right, the next theme is to help your team or your athlete foster confidence. Now I've talked about confidence a bunch of different times. I will put that flagship video above there for you to go check it out. But let's just keep it really simple here. I'm going to keep it as simple as I can for the sake of the length of this video. The short version is that you need to help your athlete if he's an individual or help your team if you're working with a team or if you're coaching a team. You need to help them identify what actions do they take when they are being the best version of themselves. So for you individual athlete coaches, right? What, what actions does your athlete take when they're being the best, most confident, most loyal, most authentic version of themselves? For you coaches of teams, what's the team identity? Can you help them cultivate a team identity? This is how we go about winning games. So for example, if you're the coach of a, regardless of the sport, of a really gritty team, a really hard nosed, really gritty team, you're just in your identity is we're just going to outwork you and we're going to be physical. Well, that probably lines up with a series of actions. And it's your job as the coach to remind these athletes when they're taking these actions, this is them being confident. This is them being loyal and authentic. Because what happens when they start acting unconfidently? Well, this gritty hard notes team probably becomes more passive. They're, they're not the aggressor. They don't attack the ball and they shy away probably from the physicality of the game. So again, confidence, as we talked about in that flagship video, is an action. And the easiest way to, for a coach to foster confidence with either their individual athlete or their teams is to help e each of them identify what actions for them line up with their confident self. Okay. Once they do that, if they start to take those actions more often than not, then they're going to have all the feeling and the belief of confidence in the world that they need. But that is the coach's role. 
help the team identify what is your identity as a team, what actions line up with that. And regardless of how you feel or how the game's going, those are the actions that we need to continue to take. Now, listen, that's a lot and there's a lot more to it. But again, I'll leave that video to confidence down in the description link. I've also got a few confidence resources on my website that you can go and check out trainwithperk.com. All right, the fourth theme is creating mechanisms to help them handle mistakes. And this can be done for individuals and for teams. Let's break it down. Each individual athlete, whether they're on a team or not, needs to have something installed for when things go wrong. Okay? Mental performance is, in sports psychology is not for the sunshiny days when everything goes according to plan. It's meant for the days when we run into a storm, when we run into adversity. And the be one of the best things that you can do for your athletes is to help them install something, some sort of physical cue and some sort of mental cue, I'll break that down here in a second, that helps them move forward that gets them unstuck from the mistake and helps them move forward into the next moment. Now, like I said, this can be a physical cue. So one of the more common ones that I see, especially with baseball players, is if a baseball player makes a mistake, a fun little physical cue is there's a little button on the top of their hat. They push that button and they flush that mistake away. Okay, so what this is, is this is a physical cue and they've trained themselves that whenever they do this, I need to mentally move forward. I need to leave it, leave it in the past. I need to flush it, like you're literally flushing it down the toilet. Okay? Now, you can come up with something for each individual athlete, regardless of their sport, but it helps to have something physical, whether it's something they can grab, something they can tap on, on their foot or whatever it is, something physical, some sort of physical cue that allows them to move forward. Now, it's best to pair that physical cue with something mental. So again, back to the baseball player example, when they push the button on top of their head or on the top of their cap, they're literally telling themselves, hey, flush it, gotta move forward. Or they just say flush it because when they've told themselves and they've trained themselves that when they say flush it, they are leaving whatever happened in the past and they are moving forward into the next moment. Now, what I would encourage you to do, whether you're the coach or a parent of an individual athlete, or you have a whole team of athletes, is that each individual person should have their own mechanism. And that can be very effective. But another really effective thing, especially if you're the coach of a team, is to have the team come up with a team mechanism that helps them move past mistakes. Now, this can be a fun little exercise for any team. It really helps bring the team together, but work with the team to say, hey, listen, when you see one of your teammates make a mistake and they're getting down on themselves, what are we going to say? It could be a code word, it could be something fun, it could be something goofy, whatever it is, it doesn't really matter. What matters is, is that the team knows what, that whenever that thing is said or that physical action is done, that we're moving forward, that we are now accountable to getting our focus into the next moment. Comment below with what you and your team can come up with you know, from a team exercise standpoint that the team will use whenever they see one of their athletes or one of their teammates struggle that they're gonna use to move into the next moment. I look forward to hearing some of these. Number five is reward the process. Many times I see coaches frustrated with their athletes for not doing the little things. And honestly, back to number one, it's probably because they're concerned about those results or they're way too focused on all those things outside of their control. So let's handle number one first. And then to reinforce that with number five here, let's reward when we see them investing in things that are in their control, when they invest in the process. Now I've seen this done a variety of ways. Right? It could be a belt, it could be some sort of crown, anything. It could be, you know, the classic um, whiteboard or bulletin board with the stars or the stickers that go on there. I would encourage you to customize this and consider the age of the athlete and the sport of the athlete and try and come up with something unique. You know, so for example, one of the hockey teams that I work with, whenever, you know, one of the lower line players, or, you know, not the starters or the guys that get all the glory, whenever they at practice really do a great job and really put a lot of effort forward, they get a grinder belt. And it's a big old like professional wrestling belt that they get to wear around that day or that they get to wear around the facility for the rest of the day or until the next practice, because they 
invested in the process and we rewarded those people or those individual athletes that don't get a ton of playing time, but they come to work every day and they put the effort forward and they make the team better. We found a creative way to reward that. And it was with a, <laughs> a big gold professional wrestling belt. Right? And they wear this with pride. Let me tell you, they want that belt. All right, let's simplify this. What process do you want to reward? What is a creative way, a very motivating way to reward those people by putting them in the spotlight, you know, showering them with praise, that sort of thing? How are you going to reward those people for doing the little things that you want them to be able to do? Once you do that, I think you're going to see an immediate focus from not just those players, but from everyone in those areas that maybe you were having a hard time getting them to buy into. All right, if you enjoyed the video, make sure that you give me a thumbs up, I'd be honored, but also make sure that you subscribe, hit that notification bell, and again, get over there, get that free guide, trainwithperk.com slash free guide. Thank you.